Thanks for joining us on the John Mandola Show, driven by McCarthy Tire and Automotive Centers. Let's talk Holy Cross basketball. And it all starts with the Calaises. We've got uh, the coach, Al, and his son, Connor, joining us here on the show. Welcome, guys. And I know you're going to have a great holiday uh, coming up, but uh, I know basketball will be a topic of the conversation, uh, whether it's at dinner, lunch, or, or at breakfast. But uh, welcome in. And Al, first of all, let's talk about uh, this year's team. Last year, come off a Tremendous run, tremendous team with Josh Cozen and crew, and you guys make it to the state championship game. Uh, tell us how tough it was to uh, to come back this year without Josh. I know I saw him at the game the other day. He's he's taken in the sights already. Yeah, Josh came in a, a few days ago, and um, you know he misses it. We certainly miss him, um, and we just have a you know due to that, we we need to attack. Uh, we have a whole different uh, attack. Um, you know, we're trying to push the ball a little bit more. Um, we need to be more solid defensively um, in, in terms of uh, fundamentally sound because Josh isn't there to, you know, to reject mistakes and things like that. So, um, you know, we're, we're working on fundamentals. Uh, everybody's got to pick up the slack, you know. Um, not only do we lose Josh, but, um, you know, Casey Gaughan and Kerry Carney and Corey Joyce. Uh, that, that's a lot of points and a lot of rebounds to replace. But, uh, you know, at, at this point, you know, it, uh, Abington out of the gate, we struggled, but uh, you know since then we've been getting, we've been improving it uh, each and every game. And, and as a coach, really that's all you ask for is that um, you, you continually try to get better, and uh, and it's worked out so well. Uh, we're on a four game streak right now, and looking forward to the lineup. Well, you got uh, your son Connor Calais uh, as a, a great young man on and off the court in the job he does. Uh, tell us about his development over the years. and He's been around basketball so much and, and having his brother, having you around, and, and just to kind of know the game inside and out. And when you see him play on the court, uh, he just always seems to be uh, in control. Well, he, he is. And as you said, John, he, he, he grew up with this. Um, you know, when, when you know my wife was shopping or something uh, and I was babysitting, Connor was basically in the gym. Um so I mean, he's he's heard that sound of balls bouncing, and as soon as he could walk, he, he was bouncing it. So, uh, you know, at this point, uh, although he's just turned eighteen, uh, he's probably got seventeen years of experience already. Uh, so, he, he, you know, he, he's well versed. Um, he, he's seen, uh, you know, he's seen us through so many seasons. Uh, he knows what it takes, and um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of him. He, he does work hard. He, uh, you know, on the court, off the court, I'm, I'm just as proud. He's a gentleman, and um, uh, I'm just, I'm thrilled for him. Um, I, I know, you know, we talk about team goals all the time, but when you work hard, um, good things seem to happen. And, and I'm just thrilled for him that, um, you know, that, that not only did he get a thousand points, but, um, but the team is winning as well. Because, you know, knowing him, it, it just wouldn't mean as much if we weren't. How tough is it for you? Because you're the coach and you're the dad at the same time. And, you know, sometimes you probably would like to be just one or the other. But I'm sure in some ways you get to relish the fact that uh, here's your kid doing a great job, being a great leader on the court and, and having your son, uh, other son there coaching with you. It's a, really a nice family affair that doesn't happen for a whole lot of people. It's a, it's a rare thing that can happen, and, and you guys have enjoyed some great success. I just consider myself uh, very, very fortunate. As you said, it, it, you know, seldom does it happen at all, but it has a success. Uh, we've had first, um, first with Al's teams, and um, you know, now with Connor and, and Al helping me out, um, it, it's uh, I, I, I couldn't be any luckier, um, and I'm, I'm thankful for that. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure how thankful Connor is some days having his dad and his brother there. Um, you know, but. Uh, uh, you know he he handles it well um, usually usually um, but um, I wouldn't trade it for the world I really wouldn't. That's got to be a lot of pressure on Connor Calais. Let's talk with him now here on the John Mandola Show, driven by McCarthy Tire and Automotive Centers. First of all, Connor, congratulations! Your one thousandth career point. Uh, tell us about the uh, the journey through Holy Cross for you to get to one thousand career points. Uh, thank you. First off. Um, and the journey through it, um, you know, it's it's not really the journey that uh, you know you have to put yourself through it. You know, there's there's play, there's times where you have to work hard. Um, obviously, it pays off. But um, you know, if you're going to get a personal achievement, it doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter really what you do. It need, you need it needs to come from your team. It needs to come from your coaches and things like that. So, um, you know, I like to thank them for giving me the opportunity and having the opportunities to play with them, along with my hardworking ethic. Um, you know. 
uh, I guess it just came into place. Connor Calais and Al Calais here on the John Mandola Show, driven by McCarthy Tire and Automotive Centers. Well, Connor, talk about this year's team because you you got to take a bigger role this year. Josh Cozen had a great part of it last year, and some other guys, Casey Gahan and crew. But uh, you know, you really have to make things work. And one of those guys this year who stepped up for you looks like Connor Jones has really uh, played a bigger role so far this season for you guys. And, and when you go to the rack, he's there to clean it up in case you miss. Uh, yeah, you know, def- different people definitely had to step up with um, four seniors being gone from last year. <clears throat> um, you know, I had to take it a little upon myself to change the kind of game that I play, where it's, um, you know, running the team for the most part and distributing to trying to look for my shot a little bit more, um, as well as still keeping people involved. But, um, you know, people have stepped up, like Connor Jones, um, Robbie Torrey. Um, and, you know, not only those two guys, people have filled their roles Um you know, the way we need we needed them filled, and uh, they're doing it willingly. So, um, obviously, it's working. We're on a four-game run now, so hopefully we can maintain it. We're talking with Connor Calais here on the John Mandola Show, driven by McCarthy Tire and Automotive Centers. Connor, when you talk about your basketball future, obviously you're going to go through the high school part. Uh, is basketball something you want to do at the next level, or is coaching something you'd like to do down the road? Um, yeah, I want to continue to play in college. Uh, I have options up in the air right now, so I'm not too sure where I want to go, but I definitely want to continue to play. Talk about, uh, have you ever looked at, uh, you know, your height as a disadvantage or do you look at that as, you know, it is what it is and you'll play it to your advantage. I mean, you, there's guys six foot seven going up against you when you take the ball inside and they're still not blocking your shot. So you've been able to adapt your game to make sure that people aren't just blocking the shot on you. Yeah, you know, that that's the word to describe it. You know, you kind of have to adapt to it. Um, you have to learn how to be creative with your hands around the rim. You have to be able to use both hands um, to try and get around shot blockers. Um, yeah, um, I was, I've been trying to work really hard on um, a pull-up jump shot as well. Um, for the most part of my career, you know, I, I wanted to get to the basket and create contact and try and go through it. But now, um, you know, when it gets into states, especially and things like that, when you have Namely, two guys that are down there that are usually six six and six eight. Um, that's one thing that I've really tried to work on was a pull up jump shot, and that's you know what I'm trying to incorporate into my game as well. Connor Calais here on the John Mandola Show, driven by McCarthy Tire and Automotive Centers. Talk about your ball handling skills, Connor. Uh, doesn't matter who they throw at you; you seem to be able to dribble through stuff, pass through stuff, do what you have to do if stop and and shoot a three pointer or whatever it is. But you've got tremendous ball control. Talk about uh, what age that started and and just constant work uh, with a basketball in your hand. Um, you know, ball handling was something that I always um, I always loved to do. Um, you know, sometimes I, I really didn't want to go shoot and things like that. I didn't really have, have all that, but for some reason, I always just wanted to work on ball handling. Um, that's, that's something I do every time I go into the gym or every time I'm, um, I'm going to leave the gym because, um, you know, if, if we're going to actually get into an offense or if we need to get the ball down the court, um, I understand that that's ma- my main job is to, you know, be able to handle the ball. So I've, uh, I've begun to do, uh, you know, more more difficult things, uh, you know, as I got older, doing ball handling drills and things like that. So um, also doing it, you know, with people pressuring me. Uh, so, yeah, um, you know, I worked on ball handling for a while, and it's something that I try to, you know, put into my game as best as I could. Connor Calais and Al Calais joining us here on the John Mandola Show, driven by McCarthy Tire and Automotive Centers. Well, if your dad's still around there, I'd like to ask him a, a couple more questions about you. So uh, thank you, Connor, and congratulations on your 1,000th career point. Thank you very much. Al, uh, we talk about Connor Calais, the job he could do handling the ball, and, uh, and I, m- I mentioned this to Connor. Uh, tell us about Connor Jones. He really seems like he's elevated his game in the in the, the basketball game I got to see the other night against Holy Redeemer. Uh, really become a, a nice inside presence you know, after Josh Cozen graduated. Yes, uh, you know, Jones has been working hard in the post, had his post moves um uh, and, and as a post player, he's very quick. Um, the, the, the thing that makes um, that makes uh, Connor Jones really dangerous is the fact that he can go out there and, and, and hit the three uh, as well. So, I mean, you not only need to guard him in the post, but you got to go to the perimeter as well. So, um, um, you know, he's got the ability to do both very well, and um, he also continues to work at it. 
Impressed with Eric Nelson. Gave you some good quality minutes last year. You got Tory and Trainer this year who are doing a nice job. And then some of those guys off the, the bench, uh, you know, Krupski or, or Elise, uh, you know, uh, those, those guys contributed as well. So it de- depends on who gets in trouble, but you have some guys that you could, uh, you could count on when they come off the bench. Yeah, um, you know, our, our other seniors that gets a lot of time, um, you know, Eric Nelson, Eric came off uh, the bench last, last year, and, um, you know, as the year went on, uh, he got considerable experience in the state playoffs, you know, put some big steals for us and things like that. Um, you know, uh, Rob Torrey, same thing. Um, those, uh, Rob, along with uh, Eric and, and Connor Jones, with over our main three guys off the bench last year, um, you know, it wraps some Brad continues to improve. Uh, you know, he's he's one of our starters right now, and uh, he's doing a great job. And another kid who can play inside or outside. A uh, real pleasant surprise has been Billy Trainer, a sophomore who's uh, really worked hard over the summer and uh, giving us a lift. Um, you know, a couple a couple um, in, you know two or three of our first games we were struggling, and, and Billy literally uh, kept us in the game. Um, uh, you know, with some big shots. You know, it kind of, kind of gets the full court pressure. Um, all the time, and you know, for for as much as he does, um, you know, we you, you, and we simply need other people to step up. And uh, Billy's really, uh, you know, he's shown a lot of a lot of guts. He plays hard and um, isn't phased by the crowds that we get to our games. Now, it's been an emotional uh, run for you guys last year. Uh, tremendous support from uh, your student athletes, from the community, uh, from everyone at Holy Cross, that's for sure. Uh, that was tremendous. And, of course, you're going to go through it again this year with your son in his senior year, one final time uh, coaching your son. That's got to be a, a lot of emotions for you uh, in this past year. I'm sure in a lot of ways you're soaking it up. But uh, as Mike Schubeck mentioned with his son, a very emotional time for him to coach his own son and go through the run that they went through at Old Forge. You're experiencing, I'm sure, a similar situation with your son, Connor. Well, you know, I am. Um, we, in 1996, we went to Hershey, and we have a picture of Connor. He was six months old at the time, and you know, last year um, uh, we went again, and, and uh, you know, it, it, it's just been—it's been unbelievable. It, you know, if you're writing a movie, you couldn't write a, a better script. Um, I'm not sure people would even believe it. Um, I, I'm just really fortunate these things happen to me. Um, I, at, at this point, we're just—we're we're trying to get better, so I haven't really uh, got a chance to, sit, you know, really think that. I mean, I, I know this is the last year, but. Um, uh, we're just we're just trying to get better, and, and and you know we're asking Connor to do some different things. So right now it's all business, but um, you know this, this is this is the most difficult part. Uh, is the early part where you're, we're out scouting teams and, and trying to see what system works best for us and who works with us. Uh, once we get settled in a little bit, um, yeah, I you know it's uh, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do with myself. <laughs> Uh, other than watch him play, I know he wants to play, and, and, and that'll be fun too. But it's just, it, it's a little bit different. Um, you, you know, to have my, my the, the support that we have um, for, for my whole family, uh, and, and that's a large crowd. That's part of the reason we have such a big crowd. Um, you know, I have six brothers and sisters. My wife has six brothers and, or five brothers and sisters. So that kind of fills up half the gym in itself. So I don't <laughs> even know how the crowds are going to happen after this year. But um, they, they've been, you know, tremendous and. Um, um, you know, yeah, this this, this will end, but um, you know that's the great part. I'm, I'm his dad, and he's always going to be my son, and uh, I'm just uh, uh, I'm lucky. Great family support and a great story. The Calaises from Holy Cross and Connor scoring his 1,000th career point uh, just a couple of days ago. So congratulations. I know you guys will uh, have some good family time. Of course, there'll be basketball involved. But uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Al Calais and Connor Calais here on the John Mandola Show. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you, John, and uh, and your family and, and, and those you're working with. And uh, thanks very much for having us. We really appreciate it. Thank you.